Hello, it's Rita from Smoke Free 123, and I just wanted to take a few minutes to explain hypnosis to you and how we use hypnosis to help people become happy, healthy non smokers. Um, if you've been smoking for a while, my guess is you've probably tried a lot of different ways to stop smoking, um, you know, patches, gum, uh, maybe some of the medication like Chantix or Wellbutrin. Um, you know, I help, I, I've seen so many people over the years and help them stop smoking. And I'm a former pack and a half a day smoker myself. So believe me, I tried everything back when I smoked, there wasn't Shantex or obviously not e-cigarettes or anything. Cause I stopped over 23 years ago, but, um, and I stopped with hypnosis before I became a hypnotherapist and it's my life's work to help people, uh, stop smoking. Um, it's my passion and my mission because I really believe that smoking cessation is, you know, it's not just about stopping smoking. It's about opening this powerful door to your transformation into being your best self and, and, uh, really moving forward in your life in a powerful way. But anyway, so getting back to hypnosis, um, so if you've tried all of those things and maybe found that they weren't successful for you, I, one, they, it really isn't your fault. A lot of why we continue to smoke is really, really, really not the physical aspect of it, that you might be addicted to nicotine. That could be true. But the physical withdrawal from nicotine is a pretty mild process. I remember when I smoked, I would put the patch on, but I still wanted to smoke. And I was getting all the nicotine I needed going through my system. And you probably noticed that. I, I have clients who are incredibly heavy smokers who actually work jobs where they might spend 24 to 48 hours every week not smoking because their their job just demands that they can't smoke for that length of time. And they're actually physically withdrawn from drawn from nicotine by the time they you know finish that shift. Um, but And they're fine but it's the mental f aspect of smoking that really drives us. So I just wanted to explain really quickly, and maybe you've seen me in other videos explaining this, but I just kind of wanted to dive into it a little uh, bit, just, you know, if you're curious about it. Um, so here's my bad, bad drawing of the mind. <laughs> Let's pretend this is the mind, okay? <laughs> and, uh, 12% of our mind, you know, like a really pretty small part of it is the critical analytical willpower part of the mind. And that is the part of the mind that wants to quit smoking, right? That's the logical brain. That's the part of the mind that's like, I should stop. It's not healthy for me. It's expensive. It smells. Uh, my family doesn't like it. You know, all the reasons why we want to stop kind of live up in this little little apartment up at the top of your brain. <laughs> you know, it's not very big. <laughs> and um, so when we try to quit smoking, that's about how much in, in our willpower, if you've noticed, like if you've tried to quit and, you know, only gotten a day in or a couple of days, um, our willpower gets worn down very quickly. You know, we're busy, busy people. Life is very stimulating. And the more stimulation, we wake up with a fair amount of willpower. And that's usually when people throw their pack away and say, I'm not going to smoke. And by the end of the day, we're we're pulling that pack of cigarettes out of the trash, right? I did that many a time. <laughs> you know, okay, I'm not going to smoke today. I'm throwing my pack away. And I come home and I'm like fishing it out of the trash can, you know. It's what we do. It's just that that's how the brain works, right? So this very limited part of our brain wants to stop. The other 88% really wants to keep right on smoking. Now, this is the part of your mind that um, really, uh, it, it, there are many aspects of your mind are down here. Your belief system is down here. So this is the part of the mind that believes that you need smoking, uh, you know, to drive the car or to manage stress or emotions. It believes that smoking comforts you. It also is our identity. We see ourselves as smokers. You know, I smoke, therefore I am. Uh, and, and when we're trying not to smoke, it's almost like we are trying to fighting against this, our, our identity, right? So this is very deep stuff. Um, it's also the part that perceives smoking as a reward. Um, and I'm sure that you can, you know, uh, 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 
you know, agree with that, like that you can see that your cigarettes become a reward system for you in your day. Just the habit of smoking, um, the, the, rep the repetitive pattern of your smoking is also in your subconscious mind. Um, the mind likes patterns repeated. Um, it makes life easy, right? So once we're wired to smoke a certain amount of cigarettes a day, the mind pretty much demands that that same pattern be repeated over and over again. And it's and we sort of structure our day around our cigarettes. Um, we also uh, see our uh, the, the deeper reptilian part of the brain that that is uh, um, more the um, protector of us. Um, also can see smoking uh, when, when we try not to smoke, it, it feels threatened. And that's often where we might find ourselves in when we're trying to quit smoking in our a panic, like this, almost like we feel like we're dying. Um, this fight or flight response. It's not actually physical in that it's uh, driven by the withdrawal from nicotine. It's actually more this panic that comes from the part of the brain that thinks that we're taking away something that we need or that we value that helps us live. So we actually think we're dying. So um, so when it comes to stopping smoking, though you can see that there's a very powerful um, subconscious mind has a, is very, uh, very, very entrenched in our smoking habit. So um, why, why hypnosis? So why can hypnosis help us become a non-smoker? So um, from birth until we're in, you know, our 20s, um, you, as you probably remember, uh, it, all of your memories, all of the, the, you know, you have very vivid memories of your childhood, uh, everything that happens to you, what your parents tell you, what your teachers say to you, what your, your friends say to you, um, all gets really deeply imprinted in your subconscious mind. And then when you um, uh, get into your, like your later 20s, um, and, and around the age of 30, where your brain is really fully developed at the point, um, you begin to develop this critical filter. Now, this filter is, is very essential because it helps our brain, like as, it, you know, we have millions and millions of bits of information coming out our brains every minute. And um, our brain needs a sorting system. And so this critical filter sort of sorts out the stuff that is sort of like the junk mail, like that doesn't really apply to us. So if we have a belief system in place, like that's why, you know, everybody is different because our belief system sort of filters out information. And so if you've ever been in a fight with somebody or a debate with somebody and you're trying to convince them otherwise, you're you're not just trying, you know, the reason that there, you might call them stubborn, but you're just, you're just fighting against a belief system that is so powerful that, you know, it's, it's almost impossible to shift somebody's perspective unless, unless, you know, uh, you know, some mind tricks to help, help, help it along. So, um, when we are using hypnosis or when we're trying to quit smoking, only about 12% of the mind and, and is, engage and this 88% is still um, wanting to quit smoking I and I'm sorry wanting to smoke and we have this critical filter in place so when you're in a state of hypnosis which is just a really relaxed mind state it's not uh, magic you aren't unconscious so people think oh my gosh I'm gonna you know um, float off in a cloud or I'm not gonna know anything and you're gonna you know implant all this stuff in your, my brain. No, it's, it's really actually not like that at all. Hypnosis is a really easy, relaxing mind state that uh, most people can enter. Like a lot of people think, well, I can't be hypnotized. Well, if you really want the change, you can be hypnotized. You're, you're all hypnosis is actually self hypnosis. The practitioner is giving you the suggestions and you're accepting them in a relaxed state. But in the state of hypnosis, this part of the brain, the, the critical filter becomes more relaxed. So we can start to give suggestions to the deeper subconscious mind and get that subconscious mind to shift to see like, yes, that I you're making the decision to become a non-smoker and that you have healthier options rather than reaching for a cigarette, like taking nice deep breaths of fresh, clean air or drinking some water. You know, like it's not just about saying you're not going to smoke. It's about really making that decision to become a non-smoker. So it's, it's, you're changing your identity um, and you're changing how you see yourself in the world and you begin living your non-smoking life. So that's what we're really doing is getting the whole mind aligned 
with that. And and the way I work with people is it's not just hypnosis because over the 20 years that I've been helping people stop smoking, I, I have learned that the best way to get people to stop smoking isn't just about the hypnosis, but it's preparing them to be a non-smoker and then using the hypnosis it, to get you know, get the whole mind aligned that around that decision, the the decision to become a non-smoker. And then even after the hypnosis session to continue to support my clients, um, in, in starting to develop their non-smoking life like that. There's, they, they have a path out into their non-smoking life. So it's a, it's a wonderful journey becoming a non-smoker. It isn't just about slapping the hand and taking away the cigarettes it, and, and it's not a place of shame. Like I, the way I approach becoming a non-smoker is that this is a powerful, amazing decision. It is a, it's a journey of transformation. Uh, and when you can come at it from that, you're coming from a place of power and it, and it can be easy and it can be amazing. So um, I hope that this has been helpful. I hope that this has enlightened you. Uh, most people, like I said, can, uh, a lot of people say, well, I don't think I can be hypnotized. I'm really uptight or I can't be, uh, you know, I have a number of clients who have come to me and said, I'm a stress ball and I'm not going to be able to hypnotize. And as soon as we get them into a relaxed state, they're like, oh. <laughs> and I have the joy in hypnosis to see people like the uh, as they kind of let their smoking habit go, this little smile creeps across their face. I just love that when that happens. Um, but yeah, so uh, you can absolutely be hypnotized, but I, I really believe that you got to want it. Um, you can't be made to do anything that you don't want to do, which is good news for you. So you don't have to worry that, you know, somebody can come along and make you do something you don't want to do. But um, I love, you know, I, I love helping people become non-smokers. And, and, and it is, it, we, our minds are so powerful. And when we really learn to use our minds in a powerful way to make changes in our lives, not just with stopping smoking, but once you really learn how the mind works, you can start to be in control of your mind rather than your mind controlling you. So becoming a non-smoker for a lot of people is a first step in really taking back their power from uh, you know a lot of things in their lives and they start to use hypnosis for other things as well. But, you know, I hope this has been educational for you. Um, if you have any questions for me, please uh, let me know. And if you want to know anything else about becoming a non-smoker, be happy to share uh, information, tips with you. Uh, but I hope this has been helpful for you. And I really believe in you. I know that you can become smoke-free. All right. Have an amazing day. It was nice to talk to you.